up, you guys? It's Brooke and Grace and Hannah. <laughs> and Katie's over there monitoring the camera. Sure, Grace. Um, today, <laughs> today we're here to talk about some sex ed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is for our government project. It's our field work. Um, we wanted to see if we could make the curriculum more inclusive to everybody and more um, educational for, you know, violence and um, protection and birth control. So we all are high school seniors and we um, started our sexual education um, in third grade at Carrollton Elementary and basically we were separated by genders and we, um, the education was focused on women's health and uh, the he human anatomy. In high school, my experience with se sexual education has been just learning about how to not have sex, abstinence, and um, how to protect yourself if you do. Um, by only using condoms. Yeah, by only using condoms. Birth control does not exist. Um, <laughs> and um, about STDs and about cancer and all of that. Um, but we never really talked about or learned about how to, you know, get out of a um, scary situation or how to reach out for help or who to talk to if you're feeling like you're in a bad situation. And also, um, since we were separated, we did not get the same education as the like the boys did not get the same education as us. The boys would usually, you know, go in the gym and play basketball while we were in a room for an hour learning about um, sexual education, and they didn't learn about anything. Um, and I feel like they need to learn about, you know, how to say no and how to get, how to, like, what you need to know about not putting yourself in situations that you could get in trouble with and how to, you know, not take advantage of a woman and I think that needs to change by having you know having teachers that care about the curriculum we basically to investigate things um, outside of our area we went to CNU which is a local college around here and we interviewed some college kids so basically, we're just going to compare what we had in our high school and what they had. Mo we found that like most of them were from Northern Virginia, and so we actually got the opportunity to um, see like this separation between the, our actual state curriculums. And we found that like while they're, like there's a lot of differences between ours and theirs, so... Did you go to a public or a private school? I went to a public school. I did a public school. Public in Fairfax County. Oh, okay. Yeah, public in Loudoun County. All right, was it co-ed or was it split by gender? In elementary and middle school, it was split by gender, but in high school, it was co-ed. Yeah, it was co-ed. Okay. For us, it wasn't an elementary school, and I believe in middle school. No, in middle school, I think it was. Oh, no. In it did get and, split. Yeah, in elementary school, it was not co -ed. Okay. Yeah, it okay. was split. Uh, yes, it was. it was part of our gym program. Okay. Uh, what grade around did you start learning sex ed? I think it was third or fourth grade. I think like fifth grade, we did like FLE, like family life education stuff. Yeah. Uh, sophomore year, I believe. I started having sex ed in either fourth or fifth grade. Okay. Mine too is also fourth grade, I believe. Okay, so what was the general overview of the program? Um, in fourth grade, it was mostly about like uh, girls getting their periods, and then throughout middle school, it was mostly STDs, and then we stopped in ninth grade, and they just did STDs again. So I think more so like biological, like body parts. Um, so when we were younger, it was more about like puberty and stuff like that, but as we got older, it was more like um, actual like sex safety and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think our school mostly focused on abstinence, but then we had like a week period where we went over like all the different methods we could use to like be safe and stuff like that. So mine was called FLE, uh, stood for Family Life Education. Okay. Mine was also FLE, and we, uh, we really focused on 
like the anatomy parts of it and also they did drill in on abstinence for us. Is there anything you wish you had learned? Um, I guess like it would have been nicer to have like the actual sex education later in life because like no one in fifth grade is like understanding that. <laughs> uh, they didn't teach us much about protection but they taught us about like pregnancy and all that but you know. Um, yeah, like you said, a lot of ours was about anatomy and taking care of your body, but, and at one point we even had to watch a live birth, did you have to do that? Yeah. But we didn't really learn about, other than using protection, um, we didn't really learn about the violent aspects of sex or like protecting yourself other than just using condoms. Okay, what about you? We didn't, as she, we didn't learn all the things she said, but also stuff like how maybe how a, a woman reacts or acts when she's pregnant or how her body changes or how her mood may change and stuff like that. And that was basically stuff we just never learned. So after talking to all of the college students at CNU, we wanted to give more information about our own curriculum and um, what was allowed and what wasn't in our own school. So we went and talked to one of our own teachers um, at our school that taught family life. Catherine Riddick, health, PE, physical education, family life teacher at Smithfield High School. Okay. All right, so what are some of the things that you're required to teach based off of the family life education guidelines? We teach an abstinent-based program um, that encompasses uh, STD, sexually transmitted diseases, family relationships, the roles that parents play in raising kids so that it's more of a family life-centered curriculum versus sex ed curriculum. Is there anything you think the students should be taught that they aren't taught based on that curriculum? Um, when I'm given family life lectures, I encompass all of those objectives as well as uh, rape, sexual assault, um, domestic violence so that I teach the girls so the girls can recognize those um, triggers, can recognize what to do to get help. Um, but it's, it's a very broad curriculum that I actually believe we need to spend more time on, not just a couple days. It needs to be a couple week long curriculum due to all that it encompasses. Okay, now we've heard a little bit about some schools up in Nova doing not gender-separated sex ed. They would have them together in one classroom to ensure that the students are getting the same curriculum. Is that something you think is a good idea? Um, I know that that idea has been presented to me uh, from the supervisor at Central Office. Um, it's something that I think the state's moving towards. My reservations being a teacher that presents the material, I find that the girls are much more mature and receptive and actually take the information that's being presented and want to, to learn and grow from it. And some of the boys that are in the high school setting, um, they aren't able to grasp the concept with family life. So my reservation would be that you have the girls that want to know more about their bodies and about how this could affect them in the future. And most of the gentlemen aren't at the maturity level to be able to process it. Do you think maybe putting the genders together would spark some more maturity with the boys? Because that's something we've also heard. I think that it could, it could help a lot. Um, I'd, I'd be willing to do a trial to see with one small group how it worked so that we could see what the the issues and problems would be. Um, another issue that we would face as the educators providing that information is we have very large class sizes. So to in incorporate and to have boys and girls into one class setting, it would be a whole lot more in terms of being able to manage the class structure due to the fact that you have large numbers. Me being the only female PE teacher here at Smithfield, um, when it's just the girls, if it's a, a block that has four classes, I could have 70 girls in a setting that I'm trying to get the information to. So if you add boys on top of that, it could be overwhelming. 
Now moving on to a little bit of biology-based education for the students. Do you think the boys and girls should learn about each other's parts in order to help them prepare for life? Absolutely. That's part of um, anatomy, biology. It's It provides an understanding so that um, teens will know what some of the warning signs are, not just of pregnancy, but of STDs and having a better understanding of themselves. A lot of kids, especially at this age, some are very um, naive. Some just don't have the necessary knowledge to understand themselves. So breaking down the barrier and explaining this is who you are and giving them an understanding of the different body parts helps to um, take away that stigma of fear in terms of uh, the kids recognizing uh, the issues that can present to them. Now, this is something that's affected all of us personally, birth control. That wasn't ever really taught to us as students. We had to go out and find our own information on that. Do you teach that in the class, or do you wish that would be taught? Um, during the family life sessions that we teach with the girls, again, I don't have experience teaching with the boys, but we go over and promote abstinence. Um, when we talk about the STDs that are out there, we re-emphasize that abstinence is the only way that you can prevent getting one of these STDs or getting pregnant. Um, I, I briefly go over the effectiveness of condoms and different forms of birth control um, and basically highlight the fact that they're not 100% effective and that birth control, for instance, even though a female may take birth control, it doesn't prevent her from getting an STD. So we cover the topics and children will ask questions that I answer to the best of my ability. However, abstinence is promoted at the beginning, middle, and end of the content. Okay, is sex ed or family life something you think that both the 11th and 12th grade students should be required, at least in a seminar or something, an assembly for a couple of days? Absolutely. We still have kids that are getting pregnant um, in high school. We still have kids that are getting exposed to STDs. Um, and you can't be overeducated. We're required to do it through 10th grade and then 11th and 12th grade. Um, it's, it's not a requirement. And it's, you know, if you talk to those students that are in 11th and 12th grade, they'll say, oh, I've had it all these years. I don't need it anymore. But if you look at the general population and statistics, it will prove otherwise. So I believe ongoing education is absolutely a must. Um, even once you get out of high school, you go to college and nothing changes. It's still the same problems that are presenting themselves. And we have to make sure that we provide the best information to our students to ensure they make the right decisions. Are you allowed to use outside resources, say uh, Planned Parenthood, because they have a lot of educational resources? Are you allowed to access those from the school? Do they allow you to do that? Um, in terms of outside resources, anything that we want to bring in to use in the curriculum, particularly family life, we would present to our supervisor at central office to get approval. Um, for example, videos. We can show videos, but they have to be approved before we show them, just to make sure that the content's in line with the curriculum that we're presenting and that it, nothing's going astray. So uh, depending on what it is, it would have to be approved at central office to ensure that we're addressing the, the proper items. Okay. Uh, going back to educating the students, do you find that there's not really a comprehensive education curriculum for diverse students? Uh, say LGBTQ students, because I know that's something I never got as a student, and I had to search out that myself, like birth control. Okay. Um, diverse students to include, such as LGBTQ. Um, I know that it's <clears throat> limited. However, in addressing the, the students that I address, I try to include every sector because it's not just a a straight relationship that could be affected by an STD. Um, LGBTQ can be affected by that as well. Um, I, I, the way I reference it to my kids is it's, if you fall in love with somebody, you fall in love. And it doesn't matter the color or the race or the religion or their sexuality, but the, if you decide to be with that person, you need to understand that these are the risk factors should you choose to engage in a um, relationship. 
and pursue it to the next level. So um, I think there needs to be more for diversity because every day in the world, uh, we're, we're growing and we're progressing to be more inclusive of everybody. And I think that through the years, we're gonna need to expand and be able to encompass all those students because eventually we're going to have a, a much broader population, much more diverse. All right, I think that's all the questions we have. All Thank right. you so much. Yeah. So also part of our project, we wrote um, to a lawmaker, but since um, with our research, we found out that the um, curriculum is what like approved of is made at the it's a local level. Yeah, like is that like, is it's made by the like school board. Each um, county's curriculum is made by that county school board, so it's made at the local level. Right. Um, so to try to get our word out there and try to get them to open their eyes and be more um, e inclusive to you know, everybody, and like we said, to have more information about, like, real-life situations, um, we wrote our school board, um, talking about all that stuff, and then they came back that it's actually written by the state. Which, we have proven, is false. And we have inside resources that have told us otherwise as well. Kind of, like, <laughs> shows how, um... They're not willing to reform at all. Yeah. So, to make our voice louder and create a bigger scene, <laughs> we think that it would be more efficient to have a lot of people stand up and actually talk to the school board and send many more letters to try to change their mind. To, like, help this, we need people to come to action with this. We need supporters with this because we feel that this is a a big issue for us and we don't think that going into college with the and like life in general like with what we know is not efficient and we're not knowledgeable on like real life situations like it's we're not ready to be put into the rest of the world where we don't know about the things that we should learn in this so like we don't know about like and it's not fair to, like, us that we won't learn how to deal with the situation until it actually happens. And in most situations, that's not something to just, like, get up and learn from. It's something that really tears you down, especially in violent relationships and um, violent situations. And we shouldn't have to wait until something bad happens yeah. to be able to realize that what is happening is wrong. We need to be informed on the subject and we need to have the information and have the tools to be able to know. Know the warning signs. Yes. And how to, like, go to someone and <clears throat> get help and... Get out of a bad relationship. Yes, get out of a bad relationship, tell someone what's happening to you. And definitely since we're all going to college... We should have been educated about, uh, about, you know, violent relationships and situations and rape because, you know, sadly, one, one in five girls get raped at college campuses and we need to figure out how to get help or how to avoid these certain situations. Yes. Yes. And remember, kids, don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die.